It took every fibre of resistance in my body to avoid repeating the David Moyes Okie Koki introduction that I did a few weeks ago in a little slide dig at James Jones, who tweeted Moyes out after the Fulham game on Sunday, which capped, to be quite honest, a pretty grim two games or two results, certainly, for West Ham. A sterling defensive performance for 80 minutes at Bayer Leverkusen, the new Bundesliga champions. Last Thursday, I was in Germany to watch that, what was actually a, a really exciting, interesting game of football to watch. But I was really heartbroken when the second goal went in and it looked like any of that heartbreak or probably more likely fatigue was still with the West Ham players on Sunday as a very, very bleak 2-0 defeat at home to Fulham at London Stadium made it seven goals conceded to the Craven Cottage outfit without reply this season. Yeah, and uh, eventuality, you would have got huge odds on, no doubt. I, I don't know, kind of like kept my powder dry a little bit after the Fulham game in particular because the uh you know the 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 usual circus merry-go-round whatever you want to call it of uh of, of disgruntledness or disgruntlement among West Ham fans erupted on Twitter between uh, both sides of the uh you know the the Moyes in Moyes out supporting West Ham or determined to see their team do bad divide uh, I will give James Jones some credit uh, he has far more nuance in his opinion than that. But Jonesy, it's great to see you again, mate. It's been a while since uh, I saw you in person. I nearly got to see you at the game on Sunday. Frankly, delighted uh, that we didn't in the end because what a miserable experience that would have been. Uh, how are you? Uh, and you're Moyes out again now, uh, just a couple of weeks, I think, after being Moyes in, which was just two weeks after another period of Moyes out. <laughs> I will point out that um, my stance on Moyes' future at the club hasn't changed from for for much yes, of yes, it has <laughs> for much of the, the the second half of the season. Um, but I'm not one of those that wants him gone immediately. Get rid of him now. Put Kevin Nolan in charge for the rest of the season. Why don't bring Mark Noble down? Give him the job. Uh, I'm not one of those. I'm like, I, I'm I'm fully accepting that David Moyes has got the job until the end of the season. But I do not believe that we should um, continue with him post season 2023, 2024. And I felt like that for a while. Yeah, okay. He, he, nah, you've he, been a he, lot more quiet about it for a while, picks, though. He, he gets results occasionally, but the, the second half of the season won four <laughs> games in all competitions. Um, yeah. And like I said, a couple of months ago, um, probably I think just after the transfer window closed, uh, early February, I said that this season was beginning to show um, very similar signs to uh, Allardyce's last season. and Yeah, I mean, that is overdoing it. it. Well, no, it's still it's beginning to show. It's still showing signs of Allardyce's last season where we showed so much promise in the first half of the season, completely flopped the transfer window and end up running out of steam, winning very few games post-Christmas uh, and end up finishing, I think we end up finishing 12th. We won't finish that low. Um, yep. But we're probably not going to qualify for Europe now. Um, and that's just really frustrating, really. Mm. So that, that's yeah. my stance on it. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, <clears throat> I'll be honest, it does feel a little bit more... Uh, I I, on, I honestly think, for, for me, that second goal at Leverkusen really, really took the wind out of my sails. And you know my sails have been full of... Uh, a bit more sort of, you know, positive wind or whatever this season. Or I just, you know, I just I just sort of hate it less than some other fans like the football. It's, it's not even that. You know, I, I, I find enjoyment in it in different ways. But the I could tell the exertion we were putting in against Leverkusen, you could tell during the game we were going to lose to Fulham. <laughs> like you could really tell like during the Leverkusen game because it was like, these are an elite level team. We're putting so much into it at the moment that there's no way that you <laughs> recover from this. But then it was like, well, I don't really care. You know, let's be honest. If we were within one goal of Bayer Leverkusen going into Thursday, 
I would have been quite happy to play the under fours for against Fulham um, and completely toss it off. But you know, it given the result in Leverkusen, it did take on a more important, uh, more important meaning, I suppose. The Fulham game it had more importance after the Leverkusen result, and but that didn't change my belief that we were going to lose the game. <laughs> that was one of those, right? When we'll get onto it a bit in a minute, but when Mikel Antonio blasted that absolute sitter over from about seven yards, was it about four minutes in? That was, <coughs> excuse me, that very point. Then I knew this is a game I'm going to have to endure and not enjoy, and that's exactly what it was. To be quite frank, after that, the way it turned out after that, it was just like I couldn't really wait for the final whistle because you knew we had nothing to come off the bench. Um, yeah, so pretty disappointing. But look, Jonesy, we're going to have, uh, just to let everyone know what we're up to um, tonight, because we've got two games coming up this week and we've got two games to look back on. Usually, we wouldn't give too much uh, time or credence to um, the, the the game that was two ago, if that makes sense, i.e. the Bayer Leverkusen game. It was such a big game, such large magnitude. Uh, being Josie... Excuse me, I haven't spoke or, or put a podcast out since that game. So we feel like we need to give it a little bit more airtime. So this podcast is going to be, we'll hear from you guys in a minute. I've had loads of messages recently. Those are increasing week on week and we love it. So run through a few of those. Uh, we've got some exciting news about some more money we've won for a West Ham linked charity. And then we'll look back in two separate sections, first at the Bayer Leverkusen game and then at the shambles that was that Fulham defeat on Sunday. And then later this week, you will have uh, two opposition views. One is a repeat appearance uh, with Kevin Shuren, who I spoke to out in Germany last week. A very popular YouTube video and podcast episode, that one. Uh, so Kevin's back remotely. Unfortunately, he's not coming to London on Thursday. He's still going to have a hangover from the Bundesliga title celebrations, I'm assured. So that will be later uh, this week, possibly Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. We'll see. And then we'll have another opposition view, uh, hopefully with the guys from back of the nest, uh, head of the Crystal Palace game. And again, that'll be the deeper into this week after the Leverkusen second leg on Thursday. Jonesy, first of all, right, because this, let's be honest, just tell the listeners how it is. It's going to be a pretty bleak podcast, this, isn't it? <laughs> even me, the perennial positive pew, uh, I'm even, I'm feeling pretty uh, It just feels all the hallmarks of post-Leon. So let's kick off with some good news. Uh, what has happened? Uh, we mentioned it briefly last week, but give us some more details and good news about the Betway charity bets. Well, I suppose I, I'm going to start in that I, I did finally win a bet. Uh, and that was that was the I think it was the top yeah it was the Tottenham game um, at my thirty first attempt this season I finally managed to pull some money in for <laughs> the DT thirty eight uh, Dylan Tomidas Foundation um, a measly hundred pounds but hundred pounds is better than zero pounds so I'll take it, it. is better than zero pounds um, yeah so I'll take it and obviously Betway matching whatever we whatever we raise in the season so it's technically two hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that you you've won a few quid. Um, it does take our total, um, my hundred, your seven hundred and thirty-five. Um, so after bet, I've matched everything. It's one thousand six hundred and seventy for charity. Obviously, um, the majority of that going to the Bobby Moore Fund. A couple of hundred quid going to DT thirty-eight. Um, still a few weeks left to kind of top that up. Be great if we can top up top up a few more wins, but. Um, it's nice for us both to be off the mark and, and raising some money again. <laughs> well, um, hang on a minute. What do you mean it's nice for us both to be off the mark? I've been off the mark for quite some time. Thanks. Yeah, that. yeah, that's very true. <laughs> now we can both say that we're both off the mark because initially it was just yeah, yeah. me that wasn't off the mark. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, um, yeah, just a quick heads up. Um, thanks to Betway uh, for paying out my bet um, in the Wolves game because I had Craig Dawson to score uh, West Ham to win and... Uh, less than four and a half goals in the game. Craig Dawson didn't play a single minute, so that bet um, was declared a winner, and that added another couple of hundred quid to my part, as James mentioned there, in excess of 700 now. The one thing I will say, James, right, uh, it's one of the things I'm, if not the thing I'm most proud of uh, in the five years or so since we've been doing the We Are West Ham 
podcast as a podcast after its birth as a live radio show. Um, the, the, the one thing I will say is that one season, I think it may even have been the first season, we won £12,000 between us for charity. Uh, so we, we, we were six grand and then it got doubled to 12. Um, and then the season after that, we were at four grand and it got doubled to eight. Uh, I am a bit disappointed in both of us, to be fair, for what's been a pretty shambolic return this season. I mean, 800 quid between two of us over 31 games is not ideal. Yeah. Is I know there's still time, but you know. It, it has been disappointing on that, on that side, but the other previous two seasons that we've been doing this, we there was three of us raising money, um, so there was that additional opportunity to, to well, get that some is money. True. Um, but yeah. that said, it has still been a pretty poor performance, mostly from me, <laughs> admittedly. But uh, but yeah, we've still got a few more weeks to top that up, and hopefully we can. I'm going to try and play it as safe yeah. as possible. Absolutely. Well, look, thanks to uh, thanks to Betway for that one. Listen, uh, Jonesy, uh, don't forget, obviously, um, any Betway charity bets you hear from me and Jonesy on this podcast, you can place yourself for real on the Betway website and app. Just go to the West Ham game in question, go on to pre-built bets uh, and scroll down and then you can back the We Are West Ham bets. You'll find them with our names against them. And just a reminder, any money I win this season goes to the Bobby Moore Fund uh, and the fantastic work they do to combat and battle bowel cancer and raise awareness, of course, in the UK. Um, and James Rosen for the GT38 Foundation and a wonderful display at the game on the weekend for the DT38 Foundation, Tracy, who we've had on the podcast before. We know the, the guys from uh, the Tom Beanie's family very well. So uh, wonderful to see uh, the the positive display um, at the weekend at the Fulham game. They're probably the only uh, positive of all of that, raising a bit more awareness. So, uh, yeah, right, James, um, we've had loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of engagement and comments in the last seven days since we last spoke, which has been absolutely brilliant, frankly. Uh, lots of you watched the uh, YouTube video I did out in Cologne. Jonesy, I, I don't know if you've got some of the comments from that you can line up. But before um, we, we get into the, the sort of more match-specific stuff that we'd heard from you guys, I just want to read out this message we got from Stephen Poirier, uh, Jonesy. And Stephen messaged... Uh, the podcast account on Instagram. We are West Ham Pod. Uh, if you want to DM us over there, don't forget as well, we're obviously on Twitter at we are underscore West Ham. You can get mine and James's personal accounts there as well. Um, or you can email us as Jim does. We'll read out Jim's message in a minute. Uh, we are West Ham Pod at gmail.com. But this is Stephen Poirier on Instagram, first of all, James. Absolutely love your podcast. I'm a West Ham supporter based in Boston, Massachusetts. So I absolutely love your positivity. I think this might have been directed at me, James, but uh, <laughs> so many other West Ham podcasts are always so negative. I love when you mention stories about going to games with your father, grandfather, brothers and friends. Uh, I personally got into the sport because of my grandfather, who was an Italian immigrant. Before his death, I never had a club, but just casually watched to be closer with my grandfather. Following his passing, it was hard to watch the sport without him. A friend of mine is a West Ham fan, and he recommended I go to a pub called The Banshee in Boston. This is USA. Uh, there I found joy in the sport again and was able to get over the loss of my granddad. The Conference League final was so special to me, not only because West Ham won, but also because they beat an Italian club. The West Ham community has been great, and I'm proud to call myself a hammer for life. Come on, you irons. And what, what a moving message. That Very was nice. from, uh, Lovely. from Stephen, I thought. Yeah, got that the other day. Um, so hats off to Stephen. Just a quick hello to Felix and Dave, uh, who got in touch this week. Who else has been? Michael Wood, usual. Uh, Sindre uh, has got in touch as well. Yeah, Sam Waters. Uh, James, I wanted to uh, read this one out. I think Sam is from New Zealand, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, he is a Kiwi. Uh, hi, guys. Hope you're both well. That was a very hard game to watch. Fulham, he was talking about. Team looked pretty tired out there. Possibly a lack of squad depth taking its toll. Hopefully they can shake it off and get back to work for Leverkusen. Yeah, I think, I mean, hello, Sam, first of all. But shaking it off and, uh, and <laughs> getting it back for Leverkusen might be... Uh, might be a step too far, I'm afraid. Um, Josie, what are people saying on the um, 
uh, on the YouTube comments. Anything in particularly interesting? And please, for a change, leave out the ones that are abusive towards me. Um, no, to be fair, most of them were, were well, particularly on your opposition view with Kevin, uh, very positive. The one that I did very much enjoy, um, and this, yeah. this one was definitely aimed at you, uh, it was really good video from the Posh West Ham podcast. Uh, that I'll take really, that. yeah. I'll take that <laughs> all day long. I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've ever been called Posh in my life, so 100%. No. No. Yeah, um, no it was, no, uh, I think actually that was Kevin who said it, to be fair. Um, no, it wasn't. Well, the person is no. Kevin. Oh, yeah, but not Kevin the guest. Yeah. Well, it might be. Ke yeah, um, Kevin, a West Ham fan, I believe. Someone someone did comment that uh, they spotted you nicking a chip, or, or in this case, a pommes frites, which is German for chip. Um, so they yeah, mate, that it was one. a 50 minute chat. I yeah. was definitely yeah. having lunch and a couple of pints while I was there. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, it's a great video. Uh, this is from Iggy Goes Pop. Uh, great video. Uh, surprised that I've not come across the We Are Western podcast before, but I've now subscribed. Looking forward to future ones. Uh, welcome, Iggy Goes Pop. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, good show. Yeah, Can't work out if Kevin had a dog or was tied to the table. And I did wonder that when I was in, <laughs> when I was looking at the video. I was like, hang on. Uh, what's, what's he doing here? Um, no, he did. He brought his lovely Rhodesian Ridgeback Penny with him along, nice. and uh, yeah, she she was absolutely delightful. Um, but yeah, no, uh, good good stuff from that point of view. Thanks to uh, those all of you guys who got in touch. Uh, I'll try and have a look through uh, at some of the others. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe to us uh, on YouTube as well. Um, and we try and reply to most of you either on the platform in question or we'll read them out if we get the chance uh, to do it here. Josie, um, Bayer Leverkusen. I mean, has anything else been happening in your life sort of, you know, outside of West Ham that you, that's sort of interesting that people like slash hate hearing? Um, I've I spent most of the weekend in the pub. Which was which was pretty good fun. Uh, I had the was, that, was it fun? It sounds a little bit. It was bleak. fun. I was on my own for the pretty much the whole thing though. Um, Luke yeah. and Harrison were out all day Saturday, so it's an opportunity to go to the pub and watch the Grand National and a bit of football. Uh, yeah. I was on my own, uh, and then I was the only one out of the group of group of mates who I sit with at West Ham to to have bothered to go to the game. Uh, <laughs> you see enough. quite a lot of people as well, don't yeah, you? Yeah, and I'm I'm the one that lives the furthest away. It took me three hours to travel in. Uh, one of the lads I asked are you come and he just replied lol and I was like well I'll take that as a no then. Um, and a few hours like oh no I, one was like oh, I forgot we were playing uh, so we're going to have a roast with me and mum and stuff and I was like oh, it was just me then is it then that's um, that's what I started doing around so I tried getting rid of my brother's ticket the one Fulham fan I know didn't want yeah. it and I was yeah. like reply me what have I done here just travelled all the way down here no one wants to go at this rate I'm going to be no. the only one in the ground <laughs> um so yeah i spent all all uh all sunday on my own as well and um yeah, so yeah that was a good weekend now I, I don't mind my own company no fair enough um just sort of uh <laughs> want to update everyone i suppose before we get into the uh the depressing chat that will be all of the football stuff um you i i said to you uh oh, you know got these brand new microphone spent a couple of quid on them more so uh, than we did on on the last ones we bought um <laughs> and i said to you when we logged in i said um do i sound all right because last sort of couple of podcasts i've listened back to and sounded a bit a bit echoey and your exact instructions for me were to take the bit of foam out uh, <laughs> between the microphone and like the fancy looking microphone cover because uh, it turns out it wasn't a sound muffler like I thought. Uh, it was just a piece of the uh, polystyrene packaging that <laughs> it comes in with the box. <laughs> I'd spotted it a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I remember saying, right, oh, when I was editing the video, I must tell him to remove that bit of foam because it's not meant to be there. And uh, I completely <laughs> forgot. So I'm glad you brought it up, mate. You do sound a lot better now. <laughs> Oh uh, dear, oh dear. Well, I'm pleased to uh, I'm pleased to hear that, mate. Anyway, listen, uh, we better talk about football, aren't we? No, yeah, suppose. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Don't forget follow us on all the social media platforms. Get in touch on the uh, emails if you want. That's what I was going to do, Jonesy. So I'm very, very sorry. That was the last place I hadn't looked before I uh, before I move us on. 
very quickly. Jim uh, OD, Jim uh, loves getting in touch, loves an email to the podcast. A mountain to climb is the subject. We have it all to do next Thursday. One nil, I thought we were in it with a really good shout. Two nil makes it a lot more tricky, but not, not impossible. Uh, on the plus side, I don't think they handled Antonio well. That should give us hope. It'll be a different game at home. But they did manage, they didn't manage to break us down or create many clear cut chances. Um, yeah, lots of uh, lots of stuff from, from Jim there. We'll get into all that in a bit more detail in the Bailey Vacuzen review next. All right, let's let's finish that email off then from uh, Jim Jonesy. Just to sort of this will tee us up nicely, right? Um, yeah, they 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 did not manage to break us down and create many clear cut chances. So fingers crossed. I mean, Fabio actually made a couple of saves, Jim. To be fair, but you know more for the cameras. Uh, the two goals were very disappointing, especially the second one, both from corners that we had defended quite well up until that point. Hopefully, we'll always we'll also get a better referee. I have to say, these observations are just based on the game. As I watched in a pub that had a very loud karaoke session going on, so no commentary. <laughs> Uh, there was a foul on Sufau in the first minute when the guy headed him and not the ball and he gave a throw in as Kufau had headed it out. Then there was a penalty against Antonio when the guy nearly had his shirt off and then hauled him to the ground. From the resulting corner, he gave a free kick against Zuma, which looked to me like a penalty to us if you're going to give a foul. The only one that did go away was not sending Paqueta off for a second booking so soon after the first one. But we're still in with a chance. Hopefully everyone will be up for it uh, as well as we now need the points to catch up Newcastle. I think that last bit was about Fulham. Uh, to be fair, I mean, Jim's feeling a little bit more positive than me, to be fair, James. We're getting to sort of the nitty gritty with the decisions and what have you shortly. Um, but go on, what, what what do you make of sort of what Jim said? What were you feeling after the game? I went, of course, and I'll be honest, I would have borderline celebrated if the referee had blown the whistle and we were 1-0 down. But I just think, given that Emerson and Paqueta are going to be missing, not that Paqueta's been ripping up trees in the last few games, to be fair, which we'll get on to, but without them two or Bowen, they haven't lost all season. It'll be, have to be one almighty hangover for them from the Bundesliga thing. For us to beat them 2-0 or 3-1, I just, I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, and that second goal really just properly put the nail in the coffin for me. And... And I haven't really been able to sort of bounce back or find any positivity or glimmer of hope, as has been my way this season. Yeah, I think that the second goal is the nail in the coffin. Um, I I thought, and I think I tweeted after that like, we we were what five minutes away, six minutes away from it being uh, a proper European away masterclass performance, um, and that's why I couldn't quite understand the. The general negativity going around on social media after from some fans, kind of having a pop at Moyes, and, and it was like, hang on, like if they've, that's, at least that's normal, though, isn't it? Yeah, no, but in this situation, like we would have all been buzzing if we'd have only lost it one nil. Going, we've got a good opportunity here, regardless of the suspensions. Mm. Um, and if it had stayed nil nil, that's technically a win. That's a yeah. You know, so it's like well, we, we weren't that far. I mean, literally, you only can see those two goals. They were both disappointing, particularly the second uh, from from set pieces. So mm. Leverkusen, who are unbeaten in now forty three, newly crowned Bundesliga champions. Congratulations to them. Yeah. Um, it took them eighty six minutes to break us down, uh, and then you know, and it took a set piece for them to do it. So it wasn't a bad performance. I thought it was it was a proper Moyes masterclass in that respect. It was a really good performance. And to be honest. I thought we played well. Yes, you know there were question marks. I mean, it, it, it annoyed me that the very two, the only two players in the team who were both on yellow cards, happened to be the only two players on the pitch that got booked that night. Mm. Um, and I thought the Emerson one in particular was incredibly harsh. Ah, um, oh, the Paquetta one was ridiculous as the, well. The, mate. the Paquetta, the Paquetta one was it was a yellow card. Like he's he's retaliated. He's felt like he's got fouled. He did the same thing against Fulham. He did Thought get he got fouled. fouled. He did get fouled. But then just because he didn't get it, he didn't get something. Then goes kicks the other player. And of course, he's going to get booked after that. Like you can't retaliate mm. like that. So his one, yes, it was a yellow card. But the Emerson one got only fifty fifty with a player giving away a, a throw in and contact to the he just. 
to touch the other player and the referee's throwing me a yellow card. Um, mm. so that one hurt more than the other one, really. But then you got the pet. I know, obviously, Jim has mentioned the penalty. All right. Those decisions, you know, I don't think they're, they're particularly um, going to, we're going to change the game as such because I still think, I think, I think if we the penalty scored, could have done. The it could have done. But I've been thinking about this and, you know, like, if we score first, does that change the way that Leverkusen play and does that make them a little bit more dangerous? You don't know. Um, I still, Leverkusen, I know we were so close to shutting them out, but they're always so dangerous. Um, hey, they, they they were superb. They were really very good. Very good. What, I mean, very good. There was there was one bit. To watch. There was one bit in the. It was in the first half, and the the commentators pointed it out that they were knocking the ball around in and around our box, and even that their centre backs were on the edge of our box. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like they had literally ten players in our box, mm. and it was like. What, what, What's going on here? Like, no wonder. But they're... Jim makes a good point. They didn't actually like Fabianski saves. Everyone's like, I oh, made some world well saves. Like, they weren't world class. They were good saves. The one from the header, the close range header, we tipped over the bar at the near post was the best save. The others were a bit like, oh, there's a lot of people watching this. Like, Emma are on. Well, if the, but they had 33 shots to our one, and our one was the best chance of the night. Could oh, mate. I'll never and... I'll never forget that. Why didn't he take a touch? He had so much time. So much time. Antonio did superbly, didn't he, to do that? Like yeah. out absolutely skinned Jonathan Tarp, perfect ball across with the outside of his right foot. And yeah, it just needed one touch out of his feet from Kudus on his stronger left, and that's surely yeah. in. I just yeah, I think... and I'll I'll that'll haunt me. Yeah, it's difficult to, to to know whether obviously that whether that if he'd have scored that would it have changed the game. But fact is, is that you know the best chance of the night between any side landed to Kudos and he completely mm. like, made a mess of it. Um, but I think there are some positives to take out of it. It's taken to the to the second leg, and I think Jim mentioned it with the way that their defence really struggled to handle Antonio. Um, yeah, that, but like. It was just going to be Antonio on his own, isn't it? Well, that's 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 my concern. If, like, if Jared Byron was playing, he would have had a field day against that defence, running in behind. Yeah. Um, it's just a shame he wasn't there and it was all down to Antonio. I mean, I would definitely play Ings on Thursday, just a little bit more. Oh, mate, you are joking. Yeah, just a little bit where, more up front. Where? Where? Up front. That defence, that defence. Were you there on Sunday? That defence needs to be tested. That defence needs to be tested. Fulham's defence knew how to handle Antonio. Leverkusen's defence didn't, and they were struggling. Um, and he needed someone else up top, someone else there with him, or somewhere like where Bowen would have been, just to cause him a little bit more aggro. And that's why I would <laughs> Mate, probably be The fact is, though, we probably could have to pay him. We've got no there, other though. players. We've got no other players. Because yeah. we sold yeah. them all in January, for crying out loud. So we've got to play him. <laughs> Mate, so, honestly... The, the the decision right to take six million quid for from Real Betis for Pablo Fornells and spend that six million pound on Calvin Phillips's loan fee may well be the worst piece of business West Ham have ever done. Because I mean, look, I, I I genuinely I've said at the time, like, don't anyone say the words Ben Rama because we're just as we it's just the same. Without him now, it's like one goal contribution in twenty five games or whatever it was uh, before he left for Leon. Don't even mention Ben Rama, right? For now, as if any one of them were the one to keep, and I do get it, right? It, it makes it makes positive, it makes sense, like business sense, to get uh, six million for for now, because that that values him, right? He only had six months left on his deal, so. Over a five-year deal, if you're getting six million quid for six months of a contract, right? If he'd had a five-year uh, deal, that values him at sixty million quid, right? Because it's uh, you'd pay five million for every sorry six million for every six months times um, yeah twelve, which is which is a five-year deal, twelve of those. Um, yeah, uh, and so it. From that point of view, it's like, well, Fornells wasn't a £60 million player. So to get £6 million quid for him 
just six months before his deal's over when he could have gone for a free for a player who wasn't playing too much. I un- genuinely understand the business sense of that, right? You go, all right, fine, yeah, fair enough. What I don't understand is that that money was immediately spent on Calvin Phillips, who we didn't need. We've got three centre midfield players. I know James Ward-Prowse isn't like, <clears throat> you know, tore up trees. I think he's been getting a smidgen of a hard time recently because he's been like he works hard, but he's certainly he's you know he's he's bang average for us this season, and he's been middling. I would say he's earned his money. Uh, popped up with some set pieces as well. I, it's just ridiculous. How, how desperate are we for Pablo for now? As now he would have got some decent game time. He's a good servant. Um, and yeah, I just uh, look who's we weren't to know we we're going to get all these injuries, but it just feels exactly the same, doesn't it? As post Leon, when we're like have such a good first eighty five percent of the season, and because we're the squad's too small, and we didn't do anything in January when anyone with two eyes in their head could tell that we were desperate for squad reinforcement. Then we didn't do it. We were desperate for squad reinforcement this year. We didn't do it. And the thing that makes it all the more frustrating is that if we did, that could have genuinely been the difference between uh, another historic season at West Ham, couldn't it? Well, I mean, I was going to touch on this a little bit later, but we might as well touch on it now. It's like, but once the fact that they've allowed this to happen again, two years after it happened the first time, mm. um, I, it's, I don't really understand. Like, have they not learned from their mistakes? I, Mm. Two years ago, the reason why we there's, there's, a, there's an argument to be had that the reason why we didn't make the Europa League final was because they didn't invest in January and the players ran out of steam. Yeah. Um, and I, I strongly believe that that was a major factor as to why we didn't go on to get to oh, the final and probably go and win the Europa League as well. Could have pushed on further in the actual league as well. Could have pushed. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, so, and obviously... If they do invest in January, there's a lot. There's a chance that we could have gone and won the Europa League, and suddenly we're a Champions League club, and that investment is paid, uh, you know, is paid back ten times over. Mm. Uh, they didn't do it. Two years later, they should have learned their lesson. They should have seen we had such a good first half of the season, mm. and they they just did some mad, dip, like crazy stuff. Like fair enough, get rid of Ben Rama. Not not effective yeah. enough. Get it. No. Fair enough. The 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 the. Uh, economics behind the, uh, the four nows deal works. Get it? Yeah, but you've got to have someone lined you've up. Got, you? You've got you've got to, you've got to replace him. Like Tilo yeah. Kerr, I thought okay, t- bang average footballer, but keep him in the squad. I know like he's come out recently and basically he's had a pop a little bit at David Moyes in the start yeah. of football. So maybe we were kind of forced into letting him go. But you can't, hmm. you've got you to say to these players that you ain't going until we bring someone in to replace you. You could have easily said that to four nails, couldn't you? You could have said that to four nails and gone, look, mate, I know we could get six months. Yeah. But can you hang around for another six months? Yeah. We're Give us six more that. months. Yeah. We love and, you. The fans and love you. You, you, you. I reckon as well, Pablo Four Nows, him and his wonderful smile would have hung about and gone, yeah, like, I'll do it for you. Um, he was quite ineffective as well, to be fair, wasn't he? He was, those, but he wasn't I mean, doing. But I think he's, he's he would have come into his own. Maxwell really. Cornet is more effective than Danny Ings. Um, Mate, the Cornet thing is so weird, isn't it? So, but this is this is the problem we've got. And then you come up against teams like Leverkusen in, in the Europa League. Yes, they're unbeaten in forty-one games. But the problem they had, we had on Thursday night was we we're like scraping the barrel mm. um, for for squad depth. They're bringing on off the bench their their top goal scorer Boniface, who then goes on and scores against us in the last ten minutes. Yeah. Like that's the luxury of having um, squad depth is that you can yeah. you can do that. We can't do that against Fulham no. at the weekend. They're bringing on Armando Brosia, who we probably mate Fulham's have bench was so good. Yeah, Adama Traore, um, what's his Brogia. name? Raul Jimenez, yeah, Harrison Reed, and like proper decent pros, and we had like. Yeah. The 12s on the bench. And it's just that it's it's not good enough, really. And that's that's one of the main frustrations I've got at the moment is that once again, two years after it happened the first time, they've allowed it to happen again. The mm. the difference is is that it may now cost us European qualification altogether. The year that we yeah. the year that we didn't make the Europa League final, thankfully we still finished seventh and qualified for the conference league. The mm. loss against Fulham means that that's 
up in the air now as to whether we even qualify for the conference league. And if we don't, I, it's not, it's not, you can't forgive, forgive for that really, because they've, they've left us in the lurch massively and they've stunted the, the club's growth, the club's development and the club's progression because mm. they, what it looks like, they want to save a few quid in, in January. Or they hadn't yeah. planned well enough for it. And it's just not good enough for this level. For where we want no. to be, where we've where we've got to from where we were, and then where we're led to believe the club wants to continue pushing, we should have had that January. That January should have been an absolute, an amazing month for us in terms of investment. Yeah, Instead, but even if, it. like you say, even if it wasn't so much, right? And it, look, I'm, I'm really, really intrigued about the Cornet situation. Because I sort of get it, right? Someone who have, it's one of those as well. I'm fed up of people like just wallies on Twitter who are certain they know, you know, it's definitely Moyes that's, um, you know, definitely Moyes that's rubber stamped these transfers. Definitely Tim Stiden. Nah, it's definitely Sullivan. I, I'm not being funny, but I, I sort of know enough people like close to, um, you know, who, who who have got, put it this way, like who most of the big players at West Ham, of those names I just mentioned now, like could WhatsApp all of them, right? And everyone is of, and anyone who actually knows anything is com comfortably of the opinion that like any normal business and with people in those positions, it's like an accumulation of all three people, but ultimately, ultimately, David Moyes like rubber stamps yes or no. He's the one who has the final say on stuff. But it isn't that he's this mad dictator, and and he's open to listening to Tim Stiton and and David Sullivan. David Sullivan, they get on like pretty well. David Sullivan gave him a job when he was like you know struggling. Moyes does a lot of good PR work for Sullivan, doesn't he? He always speaks positively about the owners. Um, he does all the right things from like a club man perspective. Like it, it's a combination of of all three. So when people are desperate to point at one or the other, it's silly to do that. But it's a combination of all three as to how on earth, like how does four nails go? Whoever it is, I, I know there's usually more nuances and stuff like that, and there's lots of stuff that happens in personal lives behind the scenes, but. That you've got there, it got to be something pretty bad, hasn't it? To to think, oh, we, we like wh which one is it? So we we don't need a replacement because we've got Corne, but don't worry because I'm never playing him. Like I I I'm really baffled by the Corne thing, and he come on at the weekend after George Earthy. Obviously, we'll get onto that situation in a while, but. It it does just seem a little bit like there's we've we're onto, we've been onto a really good thing here the last couple of years, but we've we've sort of stunted our like exactly what you said we've put our own hurdles in our own way mm. when actually and if we hadn't have done that uh, through a mixture of Moyes Stiton and David Sullivan, um that actually all of these conversations, this weird little toxic space that lots of the fan base are in now, that it, it could be perhaps even more glorious than it has been and not coming to an end with such a, a sort of disappointing whimper as it appears that it's going to at the end of this year. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to say that... I mean. Even before Moyes, it's, just, it's not nothing. It's nothing new at West Ham. Like we we just don't tend to do January transfer windows very well. Um, yeah. But you're right. We have put our own <laughs> hurdles in our own way. It's a good way of putting it because it was avoidable. And yeah, okay, they messed up two years ago, but they should have learned their lesson. And the whole Cornet thing, like he, he's one of a number of players who I flagged earlier this season. The reason why they're so ineffective is because they don't get any minutes. Um, mm. Like, if you play, if you gave Maxwell Cornet, I don't know, more game time, start him a couple of times, being off the bench earlier, earlier, chicken and egg, I suppose, isn't it? Like, uh, you, 
you're asking a player to go on a pitch, like it's sometimes he goes like two months without seeing seeing the grass, and then suddenly he's put. He's put on I'm pretty the sure he goes training. <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't, he hasn't played. The, he's not playing for the reserves and getting match fitness that way. So do we even have reserves? No, you know, like the development squad, they chuck first under twenty threes, or whatever. Yeah. Or like, and then so they don't. It's not, these players aren't getting match fitness that way. Maxwell Cornet won't won't play for two months and then suddenly gets put on. Go and do something, mm. Maxwell. Go on. Oh, I'm surprised he's forgotten how to play football at this rate. <laughs> so <laughs> that I, is sort of how it works, to be fair, isn't it? In football, you just generally got to earn your opportunity. Like you do, a... but but you you think and this is this is. Maybe, maybe there is something going on with such a thin squad. Players like Corne would be getting more minutes. But if if he's that bad and you like, he wasn't he wasn't getting on ahead of four hours earlier in the season, was he? No. So it's like if you prefer one to the other, fine. But sell the one you don't like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I just, let let Corne go to Real Betis. See if they notice. I see. Yeah. yeah. Just. <laughs> Hang on, this, this doesn't yeah, look like four now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. definitely four now. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just make sure Cornet knows he's Spanish and might get away with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know. I just think uh, I've seen a lot of people on on social media go it's because David Moyes is too stubborn. He only trusts twelve players in the squad. Um, I don't. I wouldn't go as far as say that there's only twelve players in the squad that he rates. Um, I think it's because there's only 12 players in the squad who are but, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe it is just that. But I just think, yeah, it's, it's it could have been avoided, let's put it that way. Um, there were enough teams doing business in January. Uh, it was a very quiet January for, for Premier League transfer window um, mm. terms. But there were still players on the move. There's still players being bought and loaned. Um, we've loaned Calvin Phillips when that loan could have gone on Armando Broja, who... Like, <laughs> big time, yeah. Like, he's doing so nothing at Fulham. Doing nothing at Fulham. He would have got. He would have got plenty of minutes. Well, you'd like to think he'd got plenty of minutes while Antonio was injured. Um, like, <laughs> yeah, he'd have had one like average game, and he'd be like, "No, nah, no, nah, get Mickey." Back. Yeah, but I just, I don't know. It's just embarrassing when, um, and it's great for the kids, but it's embarrassing when you you're going into these games and you've got half half a, a bench full of like seventeen year olds. Mm. Yeah, uh, and I think that's is you. In quarter final, you just like I was like that, but like, it shouldn't yeah. be like this. Yeah, it's it's not it's not good enough. I said that so many times this <laughs> week. It isn't good enough, um, and it's gonna cost us massively. Um if we qualify for Europe, I'll be absolutely amazed at this point. Mm. Yeah, he's looking a little bit bleak. Um go on and so uh, look, we'll we'll talk to Kevin tomorrow, but while we're on the bay, Leverkusen bit. Um I, I, yeah, bizarre that that Antonio thing wasn't given us a penalty. The booking on Paqueta, I thought, was well harsh. It was right in front of me. He got fouled before. Maybe lashes out a bit, but the fact that's a yellow, it's just like, really? It doesn't make for a good football game. Just play on, you loser. Just give a free kick and it's fine. Uh, Emerson won pretty similar. Um, yeah, their goal, I honestly will maintain this. I know they were putting a lot of pressure on us and you sort of make your own luck. I thought it was pretty lucky or unlucky for us. You know, could have bounced anywhere that. And and he hits it sort of first time, not overly cleanly. And it went through about nine players. Didn't touch anyone. Wrong-footed Fabianski and goes in. And you kind of go, all right, look, they've been putting a lot of pressure on. You can give them one. I'll take that. Uh, but it kind of knocked the stuffing out of West Ham a bit. They were clearly tiring because they'd been under the cosh all game and they worked their socks off. And I'm really proud of the performance for sort of 80, even with the goal, for like literally until the second one. It's like 87 minutes. Um, yeah, ball floated up to the back post. It is a good header. Like It's one of those, it was a good it's header. Behind he did well. It's kind of behind yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, he did well to get a lot of power on it. Um, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, James, it was Zuma who sort of peeled off him. Um, or maybe a guard, but it was left in a b- bit too much space in our own penalty box. Caught ball watching a couple of defenders, but again, you know, it's, it's shattered by that stage. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really disappointing. But look, just looking ahead then to Thursday, James. Well, obviously, I won't, I'll speak to Kevin more about Bay Leverkusen later this week. Oh, I'm are you going? Yeah, firstly, you are. <laughs> All right, shall yeah. we meet up? Just to sort of <laughs> beforehand or so, cheer ourselves up. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, 
Mm. It's gonna be like I just I I I can't see the point. <laughs> Basically, Emerson suspended, Paquetta suspended, uh, no Jared Bowen through injury. Give me now, right? We went tried to go through this today at work. What's your team? Give me your team now for first day. I'm not doing this. Um, well, it's just all the players that are left. So we've got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're well, going to start with ten. <laughs> yeah, start. Uh, Kevin cool. Nolan's getting his boots yeah. off. Why not? Um, I, I really hope. I, I, I did rate him at first, but I've got a lot of question marks over Aguero at the moment. Oh, yeah. mate. Yeah, we'll get into it in the final section. I'll, I'll get some. Awful. I'll get up. His last six performances for us, maybe even seven. I looked at this. Uh, looked at this morning. Um, we've conceded at least t- two goals in each of those games. We've not won a single yeah. one. I think yeah. the only one, the only one that we haven't lost was the two all draw with Bernie, which was still an incredibly mm. tragic performance and result. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't, don't want him anywhere near the pitch at the weekend yeah. uh, on Thursday night. Um, yeah. So. Mavropanos, who's also got a few question marks. Oh, mate, sure. yeah, we'll talk about um, that. And, yeah. and Zuma, who, like, I can see why he was dropped at the weekend. Bloke can barely run. So, let's hopefully... I think he was saving him, don't you? Yeah. He's, well, you've got... Like, as in trying to... There's yeah. only half-decent defender. Um, mm, and he's, I think he's, he's rested like, rather than Trump. And the, 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 the only half-decent defender we got can barely run. So... Mm-hmm. Zoom with Mavropanos. Um, it'll probably be... <laughs> uh, oh. It'll probably be Creswell. Uh, Fab in goal. Down. Fab in goal. Midfield of... Oh, Edson Alvarez is back, which I think is going to be good. Yeah. He was so what did you say? Super so and Creswell, obviously. I mean, it picks yourself. Yeah. I don't know what I'm asking. Alvarez. You said that. <laughs> Alvarez, James Will Prowse, Suchek. Um, Kudos, Antonio. Probably Ings. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, how yeah. is that a European quarter final second leg team? It's just embarrassing, that is, isn't it? Like, it really is embarrassing. Um, but I don't know, I just don't see that. I don't see to be fair, even with Paqueta, Bowen, and Emerson, I think a 2 0 scoreline against a team like Leverkusen is too big a mountain to climb, even at home under the lights. I think. I've seen a lot of people go, oh, you know, I hope they can see you celebrate. I've been watching the videos this morning of them getting showered with beer, pouring pints of beer mm. over each other. I'm like, what a waste for, for a start. I know it's tradition in Germany to do that. <laughs> uh, what an absolute waste. Um, <laughs> oh, I, hope they keep, I hope they keep drinking because they're all going to be hungover. I don't, no, I don't like, think that's that expensive carling that you drink. No, that oh, that's very true. <laughs> but you had like um, Jer- uh, Jeremy Fringpong after say yeah. oh yeah we're going to celebrate celebrate tonight but tomorrow we're back in the training ground because we've got a big game against West Ham on Thursday so uh, fair enough so mentally they're going to be on have it have another day off Jezza yeah go cool, <laughs> on mate um so they're going to be on it um it just makes me wonder how how do we how do we approach this do we play a normal game try and cast them the counter or do we just go gung ho from the first minute and just go right we'll sod it like if you get bad, <laughs> if you get bad five 0 it don't don't really matter. But the only way to try and get two goals against against Leverkusen is just to go at them and go gung ho and see what happens. Um, or do you kind of Mate, you play a little bit more conservative and kind of just do what we always do and try and suck up a bit of pressure? And I don't know. Mm. Without Paquetta, that's what I mean. It worries me. But like, without Paquetta, like we haven't won a single game with him not in the team this season. Mm. It's and then without Bowen. Running in behind, just literally got rely, rely on Antonio bullying every single one of their players. Like, yeah, but like, it's, yeah, chick- mate, that, genuinely, that's the one thing where I think we the only chance we've got, and I mean this, is go proper Tony Pulis Stoke, like bad, like Allardyce stuff. I know David people love you think David Moyes is like that. If they say that he's, they don't know about football because he's nothing like them too. Like, yeah. It's a totally different style of play. He's far more Jose Mourinho than he is Sam Allardyce and, and Tony Pulis. But I think that might be your only hope. I mean, maybe uh, Ings can honestly do one. Uh, just like, yeah, nah. uh, yeah, we've done enough of that. Do, do you know what? There. But I just what? mean launch it and put. You know, I don't know who you put James Ward Prowse maybe as a second man or oh, Suchek, Antonio and Suchek up front. Let's have some of that. And then, but you know what I'm <laughs> petrified of, mate? 
A, I, I can't stand Danny Ing, so I can't possibly pick him in the team. But maybe you play Sufa on the wing, but then that means bringing Ben Johnson in, another player just like who, who takes away, detracts from West Ham every time he comes on the pitch. Like, just really not at the level we need to be. It's a European quarterfinal. And look at the weapons at our disposal. I know it's unlucky having... Uh, basically, well, it literally is our three best players, isn't it? Emerson, yep. Paquette, and Bowen. They're like top three hammer of the year this year. Um, so, you know, that's a bit unfortunate. But yeah, no, nah, I I can't see a single way, seriously, where we win. Do, do you know what? I just, uh, I, part of me would like, I would prefer it if we just, we sat back like we did in the first leg, soak up the pressure, nick one goal, um, and see if we can nick a goal. As long as we don't concede, if we end up just winning it one 0 and we still go out, at least we beat Leverkusen. We can go, yeah, stick your run, beat yeah. them, but run. Yeah, that's away. not the swear yeah. word. Run isn't the swear word. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, uh, if we just win one 0 I'll be, I'll take that as a win. I'll go out and celebrate after that. I think because it'd be like, well, yeah, yeah. First team to beat Leverkusen. Yeah, Bayern Munich couldn't do it. Have that yeah. Harry Kane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I do think there is a bit of me that's like, I don't, I don't want to see us do this gung ho thing that people think is a thing, because a, I'm pretty sure that's sort of what David Moyes tried to do on Sunday. Um, you know, a p- paltry effort as it was, played two up front, like sort of tried to go a bit more attacking, and we sort of did that for a few 10, 20 minutes or so. But then Fulham's goal just changed the complexion of that game. We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but yeah, I just, I mean, put it this way. If we try and do that, well, the, it, the tie's over after 10 minutes and I'm going home. All right. Do you know what I'm, oh, that's the other thing. Just one more. I know we've got to move on. been on this for ages. I, I'm really torn. But because I really like it. All of these, all good things must come to an end, right? If it does on Thursday, which... I don't see how it doesn't. You kind of want, I kind of want to like clap the journey. Do you know what I mean? But I'll be the only loser left in there, won't I? <laughs> I think, <laughs> uh, do you know what? Lived with no one nil down early. I don't know. I, it, it all depends on on how the game pans out. If we end up losing again one nil and it's a late goal, then I think the, I think people hang about and they, you know, they clap the performance and they clap the journey. Um, but if it ends up we end up losing three four nil on the night, there won't there won't be anyone left to clap. To, to be quite right. honest, people will just go right. sub this and go home. Um, so it all depends on uh, on how it plans out. And yeah, I mean you, you do never know. It's not like we're we're already four nil down and there's just no point in turning up. Like, like yes, it's a mount- you know. <laughs> it's a mountain to climb, but two it, it's not out of the question. A two nil score on isn't out of the question. Um, no. But it's against that type of opposition. Do you know what's really frustrating? Is that Liverpool mm. will probably go out and it's like, oh. Oh. Like, yeah. As soon as I scored, so that score, and I was up. like, why did we have to draw this up? Because it's yeah. now. Um, yeah. And it's gonna, it's not going to do much for England's coefficient, no. which actually might cost uh, Tottenham a Champions League spot in the end, which is a result. That would be pretty funny. Um, it also so, might cost us a Conference League place, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, we're, we're not out of it, but um is it would need one hell of a miracle i think mate it will be the most miraculous result in my lifetime it'll seriously be, it'll be a miracle no, yeah it'll be a miracle on on par with leverkusen going 43 games unbeaten and winning their first ever bundesliga title yeah yeah <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no honestly i mean it if we win on, yeah, that that will be the most miraculous West Ham result of my lifetime, hands down. There's there's nothing, there's nothing that tells you we're going to win. There's no way yeah. I see us winning this game. But um, yeah, for those of you going on first, I enjoy it. Uh, anyway, we've droned on about that for a little bit longer. We'll have a brief uh, review of the Fulham game next, and then we'll say goodbye to the two opposition views that you'll get later this week. All right, Fulham then, James. I yeah, like I said, I sort of you know I'd sort of had this 
nice day planned for a long time. Um, took my uh, my partner and my dad, uh, my partner's dad as well. It was sort of like his Christmas present sort of thing. So thanks very much to um, Chad Yeomans at Betway for helping uh, helping me sort something out. We had a nice little corporate day. Um, and the food was nice, which is, you know, it's, it's always pretty good, I must admit. Um, and that was that was the best bit. But I knew as soon as Antonio blazed that one over the bar, I'm really, that's what I still find it insulting that we have to, you know, we're expected to pay nearly a thousand quid for a season ticket. Pretty sure I didn't pay for my <laughs> um, ticket the weekend, but that, that we're expected to pay all that money for a season ticket. And they can't do the us the decency, the courtesy of, of signing a new striker when we've needed one for six years. Like, <laughs> like at least that. Um, so yeah, Antonio blazed the easiest chance over the bar. It's not acceptable that. It's not acceptable that miss. Like it proper Johnny Wilkinson did. Like unne- how are you getting underneath that? He look he swung his club leg at it like he was clearing it. It's seriously, it's just not acceptable. Like you, you, he was literally seven yards out or whatever. If that, just bad. And as soon as that happened, I was like, "Well, that's it." Because I felt after our exertions Thursday, we needed to go ahead early. Because that would have killed Fulham's confidence a bit. They haven't won in about seven hundred million away games. Um, yeah, and then it just we their goal. Obviously, I think the timing of that compounded the fact that we didn't score early. It wouldn't have mattered so much if they hadn't either because then they could just sit back. They had something to defend. Every time we got the ball up their end and they cleared it because they were so deep, their midfielders were there to pick up the ball. Every time they cleared it up our end and our defenders cleared it, we would like trying to attack and our midfielders were nowhere near. So there was a second wave of Fulham pressure. It was just poor. We were just off it. And, and it, look, People say, oh, the professionals shouldn't be tired. Well, like, it doesn't matter how much money you got in the bank. You, the human body, even at the most elite level, will still work the same way. Mm. Like, bodies get tired. Um, it was just pants, wasn't it? It was like a perfect potion of, of everything. Um, yeah, just loads of different factors. And again, I was just, as soon as their goal went in, it was like, well, I just have to sit here and, like, endure this because <laughs> like at least i've got uh, a glass of red wine waiting for me at half time um yeah after that antonio effort i don't think they even they even look like scoring i don't mm. recall any other moments where i thought oh that was a big chance uh so yeah you kind Anything of you... smashed a couple over for miles over i don't Just remember that there. but yeah it's it's one of it was one of those where you kind of at one nil, kind of felt like, yeah, we could probably still, still get back in this. It takes is a, uh, you know, a counter attack or something like that. But set piece, even, yeah, yeah. But then it goes two nil against the run of play. And, well, it wasn't even against the run of play. It was well, yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, goes two um, nil with the run uh, of play. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay, well, that's that then. And you kind of you're sitting there to the end of the game, kind of going, oh, there's five minutes left. If we score now. There's still time. And I'm yeah. like, who am, I, who am I kidding? Like, we're not scoring here. We could be playing until Thursday night, and it's still we still wouldn't score. So, um, just one of those really frustrating performances that everyone could probably see coming, um, mm. and could have been avoided uh, had the club done actually done what they're supposed to do and invested money um, in the playing squad. Uh, in their in defence, right? We, we we did buy Edson Alvarez, James Ward Prowse, Luke. No, Pickett, I mean in January. Liquid, like. I mean, in January. This is worth saying that, isn't it? Because, like, they have spent money in their time. Yeah. And like, you can answer to be good, but... but... You, that's all very well, but if... Like, I've been going back on, on to this subject again. Yeah, but, fine. So, um, yeah. So, someone did um, put a list of players whose contracts were up, on, up in, the jam, uh, in, in the summer and mm. also added on there players that are likely to leave that aren't out of contracts, like, like mm. Niketa. Um, and I think there's, like, 12 names on that list. Right. It's pretty much the entire first team squad for crying out loud that go in in January, and the club have got to buy that basically another squad. 
Yeah. But if you do Mate, that, I'm... but if you do yeah. that and you buy, you buy, you say you, you let twelve players go, you buy twelve players in, it doesn't fix the issue because it's still the same amount of players in the squad. Yeah, there's, there's no yeah, additional. Yeah. And they've got a gel. And they've yeah. got a gel. So we're in, we're in a bit of trouble this summer. I think they've got. Mate, I, I honestly, I really and I'm not just saying it. It's not. I'm not saying it because the manager thing. I, I think, I think, think it's going to get. I think the bubble's going to burst. Like. Whatever happens with David Moyes, I can't really see him staying beyond unless we pull something out of the bag this season. Great if we did. I'd be surprised to see it. Same as you. Um, and I think if we don't have any European football next year, that's an uphill battle keeping hold of some of them elite level players who we've got. Um, obviously, Bowen's sticking around. He's pledged his future to the club a long time. Alvarez is a, is a class act and I think but again, he, he should be playing in Europe, like, not necessarily think, Champions League, but I, I think it's going to be worse. I think it's going to be a horrible, rubbish, bad season next year. Still slightly on a knife edge, but I, I'm not feeling positive about it. I think I think we, we keep hold of Alvarez and Kudus, at least for one more season if we don't qualify for Europe. piquetta has gone. Um, I think even if we were to qualify for the Champions League, he'd it, it, be gone. Um, mm. So... Oh, yeah, he, goes for sure. Yeah, yeah, he he's gone, um, and we 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 make a, a tidy profit off of him. Um, but uh, thirty five mil, yeah, it's not loads, but yeah. it's not bad after two years, though, is it? Two years bit of business. No, not quite a hundred mil that can run. Right. And to be fair, in this day and age, to be making uh, any type of profit on plat on a player that you sign for fifty million. Um, yeah, I think is you know enough. it doesn't happen very often. You spend fifty million pound on a player, right. and you you expect to lose money on him. Um, but yeah, like there's there's a lot of players that still we should be looking to tie down. Um, I think Sue Fowl, just give him another three year deal. Ah, oh, um, mate, uh, just, what, yeah. what, how much does he want? What does he want? 50 grand a week? All right, give it to him then. 65, yeah, yeah, like, that, like why are we mucking about here with like, yeah, it's like 20 grand a week. Um, when you're when you're chucking when he's class, yeah, when you're paying three times that for Danny Ings. Yeah, right. mate. yeah. Um, yeah. and you know, it's just there's so many players in that squad that are apparently are having issues with their contracts. That just it just shouldn't be a thing. It mm. should be they should already be tied down, and it just it means that there's less work to do in the summer. But we keep hold of Edson Alvarez for one more year. We keep hold of Kudus for one more year. Obviously, Bowen. I don't think I think Bowen will play for West Ham mate, for life. Mate, um, loves us. Right. No, remember it. You heard it here first. Salah goes to Saudi in the summer. Liverpool by Bowen. Well, it's going to cost them. Oh yeah, no, really eighty-five million, eighty million is his release clause. I'm not saying they were. They, I think they. I just think they paid him for eighty million. Mate, don't see it. I don't see seriously. it. Seriously, watch your space. That's all I'm saying. He's basically Salah just with shorter hair. He's better than Salah this year, isn't he? I think he scored more goals from open play than Salah has. I, I don't know. I just don't see. I don't see Liverpool paying eight million quid. Obviously, you don't know which manager, what manager is going to come in and and what they're going to want. So David Moyes takes over Anfield, maybe. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> uh, dear, this is descended into a bit of farce now. Um, one thing we do have to talk about, Jonesy, before we say goodbye for another week. Uh, George Earthy uh, went down, come off the pitch, had a couple of promising touches, went down in a really unfortunate. Collision with Edson Alvarez, and it was it was pretty sickening. I was on that side of the pitch. Um, his arms went into spasm. It sort of collided as it looked at the time, sort of like with his head um, or his neck, and he he hit the floor with a bit of a thud. And yeah, sort of like I said, arms went into spasm. Unclear whether he was knocked out, but he he certainly looked in in a bad way. Uh, a huge number of medical staff rushed on the pitch. The West Ham players and Fulham both looked very very worried. Um, about the youngster and then uh, yeah during that sort of tense time it's one of those where the whole ground sort of goes quiet and sort of nervously waiting and, and hoping that he's going to be okay he got put in a neck brace the oxygen mask on and all that sort of thing his parents I was on that side like I say his parents were sort of led down the tunnel uh, looking really really upset understandably upset and worried um, fortunately thank goodness he was Stretch it off the pitch, take it to hospital, um, and he'll undergo the concussion protocol, which means that, you know, 
fingers crossed he's totally fine uh, and if he is not that getting back to playing is the number one priority his health obviously is but um yeah he's gonna be at least seven to 12 days um before he can even think about playing football again uh fingers crossed now have a lasting damage and and he pulls through and it was just an unfortunate um unfortunate start to to what should have been a, a wonderful occasion for him um but I'll be quite honest, James, and I was the one who tweeted off the podcast account in the end. You tweeted um, you, you tweeted, uh, or texted me afterwards, sorry, and said that you were just about to text the same thing but weren't sure if you were imagining it. Um, I simply tweeted that Fulham fans singing and laughing while George Earthy got stretched off the pitch or treated and then stretched off the pitch with a serious-looking head injury is about as cretinous as it gets. And I'm not, you know... I, I, seriously James I thought it was so bad I thought it was horrible I like look I get it you haven't won away for a while you're clearly going to win the game the party's going on there and any Fulham fans kind of, there was a few in the replies to that tweet just like clowns just absolutely blind to reality or or like letting partisan issues get in the way rather than admitting it Pretending I uh, must have been a minority. Was it hell, mate? The, it they, they were like doing the entire away things. Yeah, yeah, the lower tier was singing to the upper tier and like having a party. And then a few West Ham fans, totally rightfully, look, and everyone knows I don't stick up for West Ham fans blindly. I'm more than happy to um, like criticize sections of our own supporters at times when I feel it's it's warranted. But quite rightly, a few West, a significant amount of West Ham fans were sort of like booing them, saying "shut up" or whatever, um, audibly so. And then some of the gestures that I saw come out of Fulham fans, people laughing was the least bad of it. To be honest, James, absolutely sick. Um, and again, but like from a bit of a tragic fan base generally, as they were always considered before. Uh, didn't travel away particularly well. It was quite refreshing actually before the game to see a full away end uh, with, with Fulham, uh, and I thought they were fairly sort of you know reasonably good atmosphere considering compared to what they're they're usually like. Um, obviously, their team was winning, but seriously, I mean, what's wrong with people? Like, it was clearly a serious injury. There's like vast amounts of medical staff around him. It wasn't just an ankle injury or a player feigning injury like usual. It was clearly well serious. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, absolutely classless. Lack of, just show some respect. It's just, what is going on? Seriously. Yeah, I, uh, like I said to you after when I saw you tweet it, I, I was in the pub after going, just thinking to myself, did I imagine that? And if I tweet about so it, am, am I overreacting? Was it as bad as it looked? Um, so I was quite, and I've, quite a lot of people have said the same thing on social media. A lot of people have, and the, the way full of fans are like, oh no, is it, they're either going, stop crying, or uh, yeah. it wasn't all What's of us, it was just a minority. So it was the entire away in, yeah, like the minority said, of 3,000. Yeah, yeah, it's like there was, they, were, they were doing a, the synchronized thing, and it was yeah. the entire way in getting involved. Um, and it's just, it's just not on. Um, but at the end of the day, I was why, like, why surprised football fans. Like football fans, like just football fans, and they? they just do stupid. But not, stuff. not, but not all of them. Like not um, all. Seriously, like to like be it, fair, it, to it fan, like, like, right. Uh, I, well, I, did, I did see someone reply to yours going, "Well, we did clap him off at the end." It's like, no, no, no. Yeah, they, great. One. Too late. Too late. You yeah. disrespected him by doing what you were doing. Don't clap him off at the end. Like, yeah. if you can disrespect him, continue disrespecting him. Don't like change your mind. Yeah. Um, so when you or no, not so much. But yeah. When you know, okay. like it looks like he's like, ah, oh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I, I don't know. I just think that? it's um, yeah. I, I think I, I tweeted. I was like, it's the sort of thing I'd expect from their West London neighbours, not Fulham. Um, but I just don't think you expect that from anyone. Like, well, I, I, the thing is that you shouldn't expect it from anyone. But unfortunately, like I just said, football fans they just they just do stupid stuff in the moment. West Ham fans are, are guilty of it. Let's oh, not. God, like, yeah. We're guilty of it. Every single fan, every single club. That is slightly has, different, though. It, just it is different, but like, it's not like we've not seen anything like it in the past. Like it, it happens. Um, I'm not saying if it's right, but we shouldn't be surprised. We should be mm. like disgusted by it, and we should mm. definitely call it out and call it out as 
uh, as, as uh, called it out for what it was. Yeah. But we shouldn't be like, oh, I can't believe that happened. Like, I, can, I completely get why. I, I, I get that it happened um, and it doesn't make it right, but I'm not surprised that it did. I'm, I'm more yeah. surprised that it came from a fan base that I've always just considered to be completely inoffensive, like full of yeah, like, vanilla as hell, like literally the most vanilla football club, let alone fan base yeah. football club. Um, so for it to come from them was a little bit surprising, but but beyond that, um, like I forget, mate. Yeah, football fans are just like. Idiots. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like to generalise, but I, I, and I really don't. Cause I think there's some, you know, get tired of a bad brush sometimes. But yeah, I just, I really just thought that was sort of cretinous, was scummy sort of behaviour, and no real, yeah, no real respect for a situation. Like, who knows what had happened? Like, yeah, that could have been a lot worse, and hopefully it will end up being. But um, yeah, uh, just obviously love and respect, and hope that George is. He's doing well, and uh, fingers crossed. He's um, he smashes a winner in against Fulham uh, yeah. next season to, I, to sort of give him a bit of what for. He's um, put a, a statement out via the club saying that you know he's all right, he's at home now, and he's yeah. you know um, so that's good. Um, but I, w- I want to say before that, I know he was only on a pitch for like five minutes and he had about four touches, but. He looks good. What of our touches? <laughs> like, it, like, I can't remember the last time a, a youngster got given came on the pitch and looked as composed on on the ball as he did. Like, mm. I just felt, he, he looked he looked like he'd been out there before. Like, he looked it, like I know it's very difficult because he's only on the pitch for five minutes. But yeah. he for five minutes much I worse. saw, for five minutes I saw, I was like, oh blimey, like he. It looks, it looks pretty good. Like I'm not going to say, oh, he's good. he's the next Dick and Rice, but like it filled me with a bit of confidence. Going, it's, he got it. He, he looked good. He looked good. It looked like he mm. was composed. Didn't let the occasion get to him. Uh, not the ball about a couple of times. Just thought, yeah, like, this, this lad looks like he's he's got something about him. Um, so it's just a shame of what happened after that. But we probably yeah. won't see him again for the rest of the season. But. Well, yeah. yeah, at least it depends on the uh, extent of it. At least twelve. Uh, at least seven to twelve days, I think the con, uh, concussion protocol is. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. He, he's right, he pulls through, and he can have an impact on the pitch uh, in a West Ham shirt. Cause that's what we all want. And um, yeah, I'll probably get a, a well. If we carry on going at the rate of injuries and suspensions. We are get a bit of time for the end of the season. Listen, that is it, James. One hour and twelve minutes. I don't know how we've done that. Um, lots of and it was gloomy. Almost always, mate, we do a podcast and I feel better afterwards. I'll be honest, and this is a reflection on you. I don't want to take this personally. I don't. I really don't. Like, I think it's maybe ending on on the sour note of um, Fulham's fans and their pretty grim behaviour. Um, or maybe it's just the fact that I can just sort of feel the collapse coming and I, I just can't see any more it bouncing back for a while. Uh, obviously, I'm not sure what will happen in the league. I, th- I think we'll string a few wins to, oh, maybe not string them together. Sorry, but um, we might be able to uh, nab a few more wins between now and the end of the season. But realistically, we've got Liverpool and Man City coming up. Um, uh, yeah, the Leverkusen one. I think that will just be a procession on Thursday. Uh, we sort of had our little chat that we how many more points we're going to get this year but yeah Palace away on Sunday Liverpool at home Chelsea away Luton at home City away there's some wins in there I feel like Europe might be among us a lot of work then to do this summer if Moyes goes it's a rebuild of the manager it's also probably a rebuild of the squad as well I'm not feeling too good about a European footballless West Ham next season and and you never know where that will take us beyond that but um yeah, so there's a nice cheery note for you uh, to finish on. We are still in the Europa League quarterfinals somehow. Um, yeah, let's just hope for a miracle on Thursday. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for all of you who got in touch on social media and in the DMs this week as well and in the comments, whatever. Do us a favour, follow us on socials at we are underscore West Ham. We're at We Are West Ham Pod on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
please. Uh, loads of positive reaction to that latest video. The subscribers are on their way up slowly but surely. And still, flipping loads more of you download this podcast than are subscribed to the channel. So we can't do that. Uh, leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts as well. And some nice words. And buy us a pint if you want to at buymeacoffee.com slash we are West Ham. Me and James are going to go manfully support the team on Thursday, even though it appears like it's a dead rubber. And we will be meeting up for a pint of lager. So if you want to buy one, two, three, four, five, six of those, however many you fancy for us, do it at buymeacoffee.com slash we are West Ham. Uh, and I can assure you they will be getting spent over the bar Thursday. Thanks for listening, everyone. West Ham a massive contrary to popular results. <laughs> uh, no. West Ham a massive contrary to what popular results would suggest. There you go. A smooth, seamless outro, if ever there was one. Up the hammers. We'll see you later this week. <laughs>